Hey, it's Deepak, and I'm back in some Phonic Rain. It is still Christmas Day here, so let's get to it. Just when we arrived at the stall, there, pre there appeared to be a pause in the stream of customers, allowing us to buy some time without having to line up. Remarkable. I don't- oh, it's the hot dog stand guy. Here you go. Are you students of Piova? Oh, it's not hot dog. What was it? Calzone? Yes, we are. The burly man in the stall struck up some casual conversation, probably because there was no, there were no more customers behind us. How'd you know? Moreover, you could say any kids your age around here attend that place. You may have a point. No, he does have a point. <laughs> it's a very strong point. There were surely kids that lived here due to due to their parents' occupation. But there weren't any notable higher education institutes other than Piova Music Institute around here, so when those kids grew up, they would usually move out of town. The town's secluded location made this option all the more attractive. Since you're wearing your uniforms, I take it you're going to the concert this afternoon. Ah, yes, indeed. I'm surprised you know about it. Why? Anyone living in this town would know such things. That's true. <laughs> Dude, Chris. Stop talking. The town's musical heritage was commonly recognized by its residents, and I knew all too well that most people were far more informed than me. While I was thinking about this, this pleasant scene was starting to make my stomach growl. Um, we should go now, I said, while deciding to take out my wallet. But then the man merrily declared, Alright, I'll give you lads a 50, special 50% discount. Excuse me? If you're attending the concert, it must mean you're a pretty special bunch. When you're famous, tell everyone how good my calzones are. I'll settle for that. Eh, thanks. So I'll have a lot to learn about the personalities of these southerners. The students and the instructors at the institute mostly came from all over, so I never really felt that way before. <laughs> Just kidding. But you're trained to become famous, aren't you? This whole town is proud of you. The man burst out laughing as though to hide his embarrassment and then formed a warm smile on his face. Thank you very much. Feeling a bit flattered, I bowed deeply and accepted the two calzones wrapped in small paper bags. Tora smiled as she said her thanks, and we walked toward the fountain in the center of the square. We sat down in the same place as before, and Tora opened the top part of the paper bag a little and had a mouthful of the hot calzone. Isn't it? It had been a while since we last ate something outside like this. I felt sort of giddy, as though I had returned to our childhood days. It hadn't, not been, it hadn't happened often, but we sometimes used to stuff our cheeks with stall food like this when we were small. Didn't look like much at first, but the calzone turned out to be enough to be considered a full meal. By the time I was finished, I felt stuffed. We killed the time watching people pass through the plaza and the desk and the glass dome above us. Before I knew it, we'd been sitting around here for almost two hours, just absently listening to the patter of rain against the glass, doing nothing in particular. That was delicious, wasn't it? You had it two hours ago. Such was the trifling topic I nonchalantly brought up. This was a first for you too, right? Didn't you like this kind of stuff? Yeah, that's what I thought. Remember once on our I remember once on our way back from music class, you were sneakily eating stuff on your own, keeping it from Ari and me. So you got a backcardio you still went out and bought it on your own. You mean you can't? Anyway, judging from what that man said, he must have been doing business here for quite some time. Yeah, don't tell me that's why you always overlooked this place. Hmm? 
んな暇なかったから I see I mean I need to well how to how much effort did it take in her to be able to come here when we came to the institute we were put in separate classes and began living apart so unlike when we were close when we were practically neighbors so we no longer stayed in as close stayed in as close as touch hmm. but I could tell that Torta was working hard even now to the point where she could no longer even snack like she used to love to you've been working so hard I didn't mean to praise her Someone like me was in no position to do that. I just said what I felt, but then came Tota's reaction. She answered after a moment of silence. I immediately felt guilty. Tota turned away her face, and I could no longer see it. Realization slowly began to sink in. I got an idea as to why she was here in the first place, and I intuitively knew that what I was thinking was very close to the truth. That Torta was here for no re no one else but me. Uh, well. Torta's mood did a quick 180. All I could do was follow her example. Uh, yeah. You might still be on the early side, though. I answered, having taken a glance at the clock hanging on the wall from one of the buildings surrounding the plaza. It was exactly 2 o'clock, so we had 30 minutes until the opening. From here, the concert hall was a ten minute walk at best. But I guess it beats being late. We stood up and headed for the concert hall. But before that, we decided to run to that stall to dispose of the paper bags that still lay crumpled in our hands. I'd hoped to get away with the simple nod, but the man chatted us up again. Hey, you too. Uh, yeah? What do you think of my awesome calzones? Um, they were delicious. There's no need for flattery, although I really thought they were. I see, ain't that great? He exclaimed hap happily, then took out something from under the counter. What's that? An accordion, don't you know? Ah, uh, no, I know. Haha, uh, just kidding. There's still some time till the concert. So how about we sing a bit? This is my second specialty, you know, you see. He said, resting his fingers on the keyboard. Ah, uh, sorry, but we do not have that much time either. Really? You're still fine, aren't you? Well, I guess, but... That's great to hear. In that case, let's do it some other time. Don't be. Tortoise started walking away. I was about to follow her, the man grinned and whispered something into my ear. If she has you whipped already, you'll be in hell for later on. Believe me, I know. What? After cracking what he must have thought was a very witty joke, the man burst out laughing. I had taken a shock on a completely different level, however. I'd never quite cared for how other people saw us. But in his eyes, we clearly came across as a pair of lovers. I couldn't shrug it off, could have shrugged it off, by telling myself I was overthinking things. But I couldn't help but feel I was double-crossing Arya in a way, and got depressed. That was very fast for you to get depressed. Ah, what was that? Chris? What uh, I felt something cold on my face with a droplet of rain trickling down my cheek. When I wiped it with my finger, it immediately blended into my skin and I could, and I could no longer f detect a trace of it. There was a raindrop. Are you crying? What happened? Twitter pointed at the dome above us and shrugged as though there was... as though to say there was no way to get wet from there. Huh? What about that? What was that about... What was that about rain? Ah, nothing. Must have been in my imagination. I raised my head and gazed at the sturdy yet beautiful cat and pee. Like Torta said, there was no way for rain to seep through. Did you feel some rain? Something like that. 
The roof was constructed to provide shelter from the rain, but it was so beautiful, it was hard to believe that it was only... that that was its only function. The City of Rain. Huh. Huh? The City of Rain? Ah, uh, never mind. Just talking to myself. Huh. <sighs> well, certainly, that's what this town used to be called, but that was ages ago. Mm-hmm. You got that right. With that, the man played a jingle on the accordion he was still holding. I could tell from just that he was quite skilled, making me wonder if it was that it... Making me wonder if that was his pride as a resident of this town at work. Then again, I was just as much a resident of this town myself. I must still lack a awareness of this, I thought, then said to the grinning man. Are you sure you have time f for this during work? That's a bit rude. I'm playing every day. Didn't I just say it's a special day of this stall? Ah, that's right. Okay, come again, you hear? We gave the man a modest bow and walked off. Behind us, the sound of the accordion grew in volume, making it clear it was really this was really his way of spending the time until his next customer arrived. For the opening of the hall, right? The performance itself won't start until 30 minutes after, you know. When we arrived at the hall, there were already many people lined up in front of the entrance. The large door opened about just as we arrived, and the people standing in queue flowed inside. As for us, we decided to wait outside for a few minutes for the crowd to clear. Do you come here out? Do you often come here, Torda? Really? I figured you'd accompany Nina whenever she went. Mm-hmm. That's pretty impressive. There have been classes in my freshman and junior years where we go out to attend a professional performance. I never thought much of it back then, but now that I was here as a regular spectator, the grandeur of the building had been close to gaping. The concert hall was the pride of the town, and its facilities were said to be the best in the country. In the past, it had likely been graciously supported by aristocrats living in Piova. The building itself wasn't decorated very extravagantly, but the simple design did not take away from its majesticity. It had its own kind of elegance to it. It was suited enough to welcome not only domestic audiences, but international ones as well. The atmosphere overwhelmed me for a moment, making me feel out of place. But then I saw someone wearing our school's uniform in the distance, and I was put at ease. Looks like there are more students like us. Really? This was another peculiarity of this town. Students of Piova could get half discounts on tickets to most concert halls held in this hall with their student cards. It was subsidized by the city, apparently, but I never actually made use of it before. So, what about us? I see. It 
It only opened moments ago, yet the hall was already packed with people. There were no students in the vicinity of our seats, making me wonder if seating was arranged at random. That was an email, sorry. There were gentlemen in tight suits and ladies in pretty dresses. Not unlike before we entered, I felt we stuck out like a sore thumb. Nothing, just a little tense. You too? She said, then stuck out her chest and pointed at something. It was the badge of a simple design sewn into our uniforms, the emblem of the Piova Music Institute. Before I could fully grasp what she was trying to say, reality interrupted. The gentleman, who apparently had his seat in the back, asked the two of us who had our seat in near the aisle. So why does he have a voice? And Marco didn't. Who is Marco? We retracted our legs a bit, upon which the gentleman smiled, lightly nodded, and walked past us. His actions did not betray any sign of belittlement. It seemed we were being treated as equals, people of high enough standing to be here. As the Kazan salesman said, we were the pride of the town. Perhaps we just had to have some more pride in ourselves. However, I wasn't nearly the kind of dedicated student Torta was, so I ended up deciding I was out of place here after all. Torta whispered while grinning, and I returned my gaze ahead of me. At the same time, the buzzer announcing the start of the concert resounded through the hall, swiftly bringing the rustle to silence. That's weird. I've never heard a buzzer at a concert, but okay. I quickly glanced over the pamphlet we were given at the entrance. First up was an a cappella chorus. Quite fitting for Natale. A quick side glance was all I needed to see that this was part the part Torta was most interested in. Her eyes were sparkling as she attempted to listen intently. I decided not to say anything and turned to look back in front of me. Before long, the choir arranged themselves on stage, and a hymn to praise the Lord abruptly began. Okay. I'm going to end this one here, and we'll continue with the concert next time. So, thanks for watching.